Welcome back to this deep loser course on diffusion models. I'm Mandy, and in this lesson, we'll learn the technical details behind how a diffusion model is trained. Now that we have an intuitive understanding of latent diffusion models and all of their various components, let's dive into the technical details behind what happens during the training process. The first thing that we need to understand is that the work done by a latent diffusion model occurs over several small iterative steps. This is in contrast to other generative models like GANs, for example, that will do the work in one large step. With a GAN, for example, then during a single training epoch with a single training sample, we pass a noise vector to the generator network that outputs an image of what we want to produce. Then we have to see if the generator did a good job at producing the type of image that we wanted by passing the image to the discriminator network. And the discriminator network will determine whether or not the image is real or fake. Real meaning that it came from the training set and fake mean, meaning that it came from the generator network. And we can classify this entire process outlined here as one step of the GAN training process. Now this works, but GANs often run into problems like mode collapse, for example, where the generator will collapse onto generating a single image over and over again that it can continuously use to fool the discriminator with. We can intuit that it's a relatively hard problem to go from a noise vector to a high quality realistic image in just one step. So we can see this process here from the noise vector to generating the image. This is the generation process and this is actually what we're concerned with being just one step is in how many steps as do we go from the noise vector to the image and in the case with GANs this would occur over one step. With diffusion models, on the other hand, we can simplify the process into small iterative steps so that the work that the generative model has to do at each step is much less than what we're seeing with this example of a GAN. In other words, in a single training epoch, we break up the work that the generative model is doing from one large step into several small steps and we will run the model iteratively over a sequence of these small steps to complete a single training epoch. So now we'll elaborate on what is actually happening over these several small steps. So just to refresh our memories, with diffusion models, just like with all other models, we will need a training set, and the training set will consist of noisy latents. And these latents are just, we can just think of them as compressed versions of images from our training set. And the noise has been added to these compressed images by what's called the noise scheduler. So using the noise scheduler, we add various amounts of noise to these compressed training images, which then will be passed as input to our model. And once we pass these noisy latents to the model, what we want the model to do is to predict what the noise is in the underlying image or in these latents. So we pass a noisy latent and it gives us the noise present in that latent. And then we can subtract the predicted noise from the noisy latent to get a clear image. And the hope is that this image here is accurate in depicting the underlying image from the training sample without the noise present. And having the network predict the noise turns out to be a simpler task than having the network jump straight to predicting the training image that is underneath all of the noise. So now we're going to elaborate a bit more on the noise scheduler and its role in adding noise to the training data. The noise scheduler is a tool that determines how much noise is added to the training images based on some predefined schedule. And for each training image, the noise that has been added to it is often referred to as beta, or sometimes we might see it referred to as sigma. And the noise that is added to any given training image by the noise scheduler will be randomly sampled from some predefined distribution. Now, this noise is sampled based on the selection of a random number called T. And T will range from zero to some maximum number that has been set. In this example, the maximum number is 700. 
That maximum number will oftentimes be referred to as capital T. We can see here, according to this graph, that the larger the value of T, the more noise will be added to the image. So this distribution here is representing noise. So here at a large T value of 600, it's going to correspond to this much noise versus at a relatively lower value of T like 200, it is corresponding to a smaller amount of noise here. And at T equals zero, this represents actually no noise. And as we just mentioned, at T equals 700 in this example, this will correspond to the maximum amount of noise that can be added. Note that we might encounter T being referred to as a time step. So we might hear about the amount of noise that has been added to an image at time step T. We're going to refrain from referring to T as a time step as it will convolute the explanation that is coming up. Instead, we'll just be simply referring to T as a random number between zero and some maximum value that determines how much noise has been added to any given image, where the larger the value of T, the more noise that will have been added to an image versus small amounts of T is going to correspond to lower amounts of noise being added. But I did just want to give you a heads up that we might sometimes encounter T being referred to as a time step. In fact, it will be referred to that way in some of the apps that we will be using to generate images as well as the code. Whenever we are working with the scheduler, we will be needing to set its time steps. And in that case, we will just know that we are talking about T here as we have explained it. So during training, we randomly select a training sample along with a random value T, and then the noise that corresponds to T will be added to the image. And since we are randomly selecting T, that means that a different amount of noise is going to be added to each training image. And the amount of noise added to each image is going to vary from being just a slight amount if the T that was selected was a low value, all the way up to a maximum amount such that the given image might just look like plain noise at that point. Let's check out an example illustrating this point. So for example, let's assume that we have a batch of noisy training images that have been passed to the network and the noise that has been added to training image one might correspond to T equals 10. And the noise that has been added to training image two corresponds to a noise value of T equals 600. And for each of these images, we are asking the network to do the same thing. We are asking it to predict the noise that is present in each of them. And by receiving these images that have various amounts of noise added to them, the network is going to be able to learn how to denoise images incrementally over several small steps rather than all at once. So now we're going to actually go through an example to show this denoising over several steps. So suppose that we have this training image that we are passing to the network for which the noise schedule has added an amount of noise that corresponds to T equals three. And we want the network to predict the total amount of noise present here in this image. So in a perfect world, with the network that we've described so far, the end result would be the perfectly clear training image here. So the we have the noisy training image corresponding to T equals three, and the network would have perfectly predicted all of the noise present in this image, such that when we subtract this noise from our noisy training image, we have this perfectly clear image. And that is representing our training image at T equals zero, meaning the training image with no noise added. In reality, however, this is not actually the case. So let's see what the case actually is. So whenever we do this pass of this image to the network with noise that corresponds to T equals three added to the image, the predicted noise that we're getting as output from the network, which will then be subtracted from the original training image is going to give us this predicted result, which is going to be just a vague estimate of what the image is at T equals zero. And recall that at T equals zero, that means no noise has been added to our image. So we are getting this estimate of what the image might look like here at T equals zero with no noise added. 
So recall at the beginning, we talked about how that the training is going to occur over several small incremental steps. So this is the first step where we're passing in the image along with the amount of noise that has been added to the image. In this case, it corresponds to uh, T equals three. We are getting the predicted noise, subtracting that noise from the image, and then we are given this estimate of what the image might look like at T equals zero where no noise has been added. We can see that this is not quite good enough because it is still quite noisy. But again, we are not expecting it to be perfectly clear as we're doing this in multiple steps. So this is just to be viewed as an estimate of t equals zero, not the actual image at t equals zero. So then what we do is we take that estimate at t equals zero that we just got from subtracting the predicted noise from our noisy training image and we add back to that image most, but not all of the predicted noise from the network. So suppose that we have some constant value that we can refer to as C for which we multiply the predicted noise by to determine how much of the predicted noise to add back to our estimate. And so for this example, we're going to go with a constant equal to 0.9, meaning that 90% of the predicted noise is going to be added back to our estimate of our image at t equals zero. And this is going to give us a slightly less noisy input that corresponds to the amount of noise added at t equals three. So recall that we started out with an image that had a noise injected to it that corresponded to t equals three in the noise scheduler. We pass that to the network, we got a prediction of the noise, and then we subtracted that noise from our noisy training image to get this estimate of what is supposed to be a clear image at t equals zero, where, which is our training image with no noise added. We added back 90% of the predicted noise to this estimate. So that's going to give us this slightly less noisy input relative to our original starting noisy image that corresponded to this t equals three from our noise scheduler. So that's step one. Then we take this slightly less noisy input image and we pass it again to the network. And this is the start of step two. So now we have this slightly less noisy input than what we originally started at at step one. And we are going to pass that to our network now and get the predicted noise. We're going to repeat the process where we are subtracting the predicted noise from this new slightly less noisy input. And then we have this updated estimate of our image now that corresponds to t equals zero, meaning the image with no noise added according to our noise scheduler at t equals zero. We continue on to add back most of the noise from this step now. So we have our new estimate of the image that corresponds to t equals zero. We add back most of the noise from this last step, and that's going to give us an even slightly less noisier version of our input than what we had at the beginning of step two. So we just showed two steps of the process, but we actually repeat this process in a loop over and over again for some predefined amount of steps. Now this is quite a wide graphic, so we are going to zoom in here and uh, just show step by step what's going on. It's a summary of what we just went through. So here is step one summarized that we just went over where we have this training image that is the model input with amount of noise that corresponds to t equals three from our noise scheduler injected into that input image. We pass that to the network. The network gives us some predicted noise and we subtract that noise from the input image. That's going to give us an estimate of the image at t equals zero where there's been no noise added. We know it's not perfect. We are actually going to show this process for 100 steps or that's what the graphic is summarizing. We're not actually going to go through all 100 steps. So then we take this estimate at t equals zero, we add back most of the noise. That's going to give us a less noisy input that corresponds to t equals three in our noise scheduler than what we originally started with up here. This is a slightly less noisy input image than this one that we started with. So now we take this slightly less noisy input and we're going to repeat that process again. And so we're taking this, this is starting us at step two now. 
So now we take this slightly less noisy input image that corresponds to t equals three. We get the predicted noise from the network. So we pass this image to the network and get the predicted noise, subtract that noise from the input and get this estimate now at t equals zero for step two in the process. We then take this estimate, we add back 90% or whatever the constant value is of the predicted noise to this estimate. And that's going to give us an even slightly less noisy input than what we started with here at the beginning of step two. So now this is going to be the input that's passed to the model again for step three in the process, but we are not going to show all of the steps. We are going to fast forward. So that process is going to happen over and over again for every step until we get to the final step. In this example, we have 100 steps. And by the time we get to step 100, we have this input image, which is much less noisier than the original input that we started with that corresponded to t equals three in our noise scheduler. So we pass this input to the model, which is going to give us the predicted noise from which we are then going to subtract from the noisy input image. And this is going to give us our final estimate of what the image looks like with no noise added, or in other words, what the image looks like according to t equals zero from our noise scheduler. So what we are doing here, let's just go ahead and get this all showing on the screen. So what we're doing here is that we are incrementally denoising this noisy input image over 100 steps in this example, which is going to allow us to arrive at a final denoised image that corresponds to t equals zero in our noise scheduler, which means that no noise uh, is present in the image. And each time we do an iteration or a step in this loop, we are passing a slightly less noisy image as input to the network and getting closer and closer estimates to the original image. So this is how a typical step of training as we know it is broken into multiple smaller steps for diffusion models. So after completing the steps for a batch of images, we use a gradient descent based optimizer to calculate the gradients and then update the weights in the network in order to improve the network's ability to predict the noise in the next batch. And this process is continued over a defined number of epochs like we are used to with any typical neural network training. And hopefully we can see that the overall objective of the model is the same as neural networks that we've encountered in the past, which is of course to minimize the loss. The loss gives us a measure of how well the network's predicting the noise by comparing the output noise to the target noise in the original compressed noisy image. So I know that this was a lot to take in in one sitting, so I encourage you to potentially re-watch this lesson or check out the corresponding lecture notes where it is all written out and then we have a nice training summary at the end of the lecture notes. So just take your time and take this all in. Hopefully, by the time you have taken some time on this, we'll be able to see how a diffusion model generates images by denoising noisy input images. And we're later going to be expanding on how we can direct the types of images that we want the model to generate by additionally passing in a text prompt.